Ladies and gentlemen, that was the opening bell giving us the biggest bull run since the Great Depression. But don't expect this roller coaster ride to be over. We got no certainty. Case numbers aren't coming down. And on top of that, we don't even have first quarterly earnings to see how bad everyone's getting impacted. I put on my Halloween sweater today because I think it highly resembles the insanity all us investors are going through with the S&P 500 being up about 17% in the last two days alone, representing about a $20,000 upside between my combined account totals between Scotia I trade here and my Royal Bank I'm not showing up here and if there's any glimpse of hope through all of this if we take a look at the actual case numbers it's nice to see that China has come down quite substantially so maybe that's just a glimpse of hope but being a perma bull in this market guys always looking at the long term here I think it's important to take everything with a grain of salt and I want to listen to the other perspective the bears out there especially one that I've always had the bone to pick with and we're talking about Peter Shiv so we're going to take a listen to what he has to say, and I'm going to break some of this down for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump right into this. Drop it. Well, the bull market is clearly over. I mean, just look at the numbers. But I've been calling for not just a correction. I've been calling for a bear market, and we're in one. But more uh, problematic, this is the beginning of the greatest financial crisis in U.S. history. The financial crisis of U.S. of 28, 2008 will pale in comparison, as will the severity of this recession. We're going to have a much greater recession than the one that we had in, in 2008. Uh, the difference is going to be this one is actually going to have inflation. We're going to have rising consumer prices and a falling dollar, which is going to make it so much worse uh, than what was expected experienced 10, 12 years ago. And now, Jeffrey, do you agree with this assessment that we're actually in store for a worse recession than we saw 10 years ago? Because we're, we're, we're definitely going into a bear market. And what's that going to look like? Yeah, look, the numbers are going to show recession. I, I think a couple of weeks ago, I might have said they, they, we would have chopped off a, a point or two from the GDP in the first quarter, maybe the second quarter. But, but, but now it's, it's, it's going to approach negative territory. I think by the summer, when we look back at these numbers, it's going to look uh, extremely grim. I think where I differ with, with my friend Peter is that I actually think it's possible that we could get out of this thing pretty quickly uh, uh, come the fall and the winter, and things could be uh, restored very quickly. I don't. I think Peter has a, a bit of an apocalyptic view. Now, let me just tell you, I'm speaking to you from New York right now, and it does seem Whoa. like the apocalypse. I mean, Broadway was just shut. You know, uh, you know, everything's closing down. Uh, it's a disaster. Uh, the U.S. has handled this this pandemic yeah. uh, crisis in in the, the wrongly across the board in every conceivable way. So oh. <clears throat> if, if you can do yeah. something wrong, the, the, the government authorities have yep. done it, for sure. And the Fed's not going to help. Congress yeah. isn't going to help. But this my is point, a free my, for all. Jeff, Jeff, again, the virus is just the pin. The debt bubble is the problem. It doesn't matter. The virus can be cured. The damage is already done. The debt bubble is imploding. You know, if it wasn't the virus, it would have been something else. This bubble has been looking for a pin for years, and it finally found one. So now we have to deal with the consequences of the disease that the Fed inflicted us with. That's what we have to worry about. Oh, welcome back. My passive income investors alike to one heck of an interesting conversation with one of the biggest bears out there in the economy. And I think he had some really relevant stuff to touch base on and I was scrolling through his Twitter feed because I always find it interesting to see what this guy's talking about until I realized this guy never stops talking. He's just as bad as I am. And scrolling through guys, scrolling through this, he's been making a tweet every hour, like 10 tweets an hour on the hour. And I kind of just gave up listening to him because this is one of the main reasons I don't like becoming in nearly as fearful. I'm surprised this guy even sleeps comfortably at night. Blows my mind, really. But like I said, he does touch base on a lot of good details, like how people that are heavily debted are going to be feeling some extreme pains through this but i just want to listen to what dave ramsey said a really good comment on some of peter Schiff's tweets and then i'm going to explain to you how i kind of look at the broader economy when it comes to the debt so let's take a quick listen to this those guys is a guy named peter Schiff, and uh peter and i have been notoriously at opposite ends of things because i am just not a glass half empty guy i'm not a scarcity guy i am not going to be during my lifetime you can mark it down I will not be predicting the end of the world. There you go. I'm going to resist that.
good for you. A lot of financial people do it. A lot of economists do it. There's something about a dark cloud that follows some of them around. And Peter is pr- continually predicting the end of the world. And, you know, if you predict it long enough, eventually you'll be right. That's exactly Even right. if it's after your death. There you, you know. Go. So, uh, But he tweeted this today, and I find myself completely agreeing with him. How can anyone say this is not a financial crisis, especially when it's even an even bigger financial crisis than the one we had in 2008? Here's where I agree with him. In which that's a little bit high, hyperbole right there, a little bit of drama, Peter, right? You're just trying to build it up again, okay? But here's where I agree with him. In an economy as highly leveraged as ours, every crisis becomes a financial crisis. I love it. Yeah. The, 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 the leverage, the amount of debt in business, the amount of debt mm-hmm. in personal lives magnifies the volatility, any little wave becomes a tsunami That's exactly in right. your personal life when you have debt. When you don't have debt and you have a pile of cash, a wave is just like, hey, that was fun. Right. Or you it's know? an inconvenience at, at well, worst. Yeah, I just got wet. Look at that. Now, Peter Shiv will always be one of my favorite bears out there. I will always come back to that guy and kind of listen to what he has to say. And it's always good to take both sides of the perspective and then come to your own opinion instead of just being a perma bull or a perma bear. And many of you know I'm, I'm usually a lot more gung-ho than most people are out in this market. But I want to talk about the national debt. This is one of the hardest things for anybody to wrap their mind around considering that's all these guys talk about on a daily basis. And we can see the U.S. national debt on this debt calculator or the debt clock as they call it is at 23 trillion dollars and rising which usually puts a lot of fear into people but at the same time if we were to look at the u.s as though it's a business well what is that business cash flowing what is the underlying assets of the business and it is so unbelievably hard to calculate this because it's just such we're talking about an entire economy but just taking a look at some of the details that i was able to find for instance let's say we were able to take the market capitalization combined of the top 500 companies in the U.S., putting aside the small caps, which there are thousands of, and including people like me that aren't publicly traded companies that are just small businesses, all of us come into the combination of the economy's underlying value. So this data is very hard, and I don't know how reliable it is, but just taking a look at the S&P 500 total and float adjusted market cap, as of basically summer of last year in 2019, the market cap combined was about 25 trillion dollars. Again, putting aside small caps and individuals and people that just work at any other job, that is a pretty large number considering that already is well above that 23 trillion. So there's about 2 trillion bleed room just in the top 500 companies. So the way I've always looked at things is assets versus liabilities. If this is the liability of the entire U.S. economy, this would be the underlying assets of the economy. And then we could also take a look at cash flow, which we would probably call GDP. And GDP for 2019 in the U.S. was at $21 trillion. So when you start looking at it this way, things don't nearly look as bad. Now, obviously in the 2008 crisis when they started printing trillions of dollars, considering back then things were worth so much less and to throw a trillion, couple trillion dollars into quantitative easing would seem pretty absurd because people couldn't even really imagine those trillion dollar numbers, let alone that Apple, Microsoft, Amazon would be trillion dollar companies in and of themselves. So when you kind of gauge it out this way, things don't seem that bad, but on an individual basis level, I think it's gonna look like a nightmare just like Peter Shiv is saying, you know, like I was saying in my yesterday video, uh, like Warren Buffett always quotes, when that tide comes out, we're really going to see who's skinny dipping because those people that are highly leveraged, oh man, they're going to be feeling the pain right now. Which now obviously there's so many different things we could look at that could change the valuations, but to try and come up with a full global understanding of is this going to be the next great depression? Is this going to lead into a financial bubble pop with everyone with debt losing their homes? I don't know. I really don't know. But I always, like I said, guys, I try and imagine the world is trying to find a balance. It's kind of like the Goldilocks effect, right? Like things things fluctuate between really bad and really good, but it's always trying to find that middle ground balance. And so long as China is not lying and we all listen to the government, and I keep repeating myself here, I know I'm kind of like a broken record, but if we all just sit down, kind of relax, let this ride out over the next two months, we could start seeing the system pick back up at hopes that this virus doesn't have a second wind where once we all start going 
coming out, it comes back around. Like a lot of unknowns are at play here. And like I said, we have to just sit down. We have to just wait till those quarterly reports come out, see where the baseline is for the economy, considering the worst hit we're going to experience is going to be in this first quarter, and then just play it out through the rest of the year. But I am still going to be buying stocks, and I'm still really hoping that this isn't like a quick little pop that's going to level off. I hope we continue to see some further downside. I honestly don't think we are going to hit the lows we just did. We might, don't get me wrong. And if those lows are hit, it's going to be because companies like Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, the companies that are holding up the entire index right now take a rather large hit on maybe their first quarterly earnings. Those are the companies that I think are going to come down if anything comes down. Because every other stock, taking a look at the airlines or Carnival Cruise right now, I think they hit max pain levels. And they're probably going to level off somewhere higher than the bottoms and the lows that they hit. And I'd love to know what you guys think about all of this, considering I ran a little bit of a poll to ask you guys about a week ago what stock you would buy or if you thought they were going to go completely bankrupt. And you guys actually chose Carnival Cruise. So uh, thanks for taking that poll. I really love the YouTube discussion area because I didn't realize how much you guys would engage with it. So thanks for taking the time to do that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Consider slapping a like and subscribing if you enjoy uh, my, my Halloween sweater that I think it literally represents the anxiety of the markets today. But wow, what a fascinating time we live in. So stay cool, stay safe especially, and stay awesome. I'll talk to you tomorrow.